So this is my pattern that I designed. I discovered rug hooking and then I got to learn how to do rug punching, which I kind of like better because rug punching goes quicker. The kind of a craft or project that anybody can do. It's real forgiving. Once you get real confident in doing it, you can get your rug backing or whatever you decide to use and draw your own patterns, which is a lot of fun. What you're going to need to do this rug punch project with is, of course, your rug warp with your design on it. This is my pattern here. You'll need a frame to stretch your rug warp on. You will need scissors, the rug punch needle, and the threader, and you'll need some yarn. There's many different types of frames you can use. This is a homemade one. I just made a basic wooden frame and then added the tack strips to it. You can even take artist stretcher bars for canvas and put a frame together and then apply the tack strips to the top of it. Just make sure that your strips are facing outward and be very careful because these really hurt. You can also get this pipe insulation at any hardware store that has a slit in it. You know, cut it to size and put it all around and it covers your tack strips and it's a, it's a whole lot safer. Okay, to start you will need to put your uh, warp, your rug warp onto your frame and it kind of is tricky. Uh, it's not hard to do, it just kind of takes a little time. Just get a basic layout to where you, and you got plenty of room between the strip itself and the design where it's not going to touch. And you just basically lightly put it, stretch it on there, get it in place and then start stretching it tighter and be real careful of these nails because they really do hurt. You want to make sure that your design is not distorted when you get finished. Take your time, work your way around. It's going to be out of whack at first. So basically you just keep, uh, keep working on it till you get it as tight as a drum. Uh, and the, the design, you know, get the design as straight as you can where the lines aren't out of whack. These tack strips are kind of sparse too. Sometimes they don't have tacks where they're needed and you can put little nails in there and clip the heads of them off if you need to add more um, tack area. Once you get your uh, rug warp stretched onto your frame, then you know cover it with something. You can put towels, or you can use uh, this pipe insulation, which works really good. I like to use it. It's just real convenient and cushiony. Okay, to get started, you will need your rug punch needle and your threader, and you will put that in through like so with the scoop up. Then you will take your yarn put it in there and pull it out through and that's that's how you thread your punch needle. And you leave about a, an inch of a tail and I always start with the detail first so on this I would probably want to get this part out of the way so that when you do these mountains back here you'll be working around the detail. It's easier to do that than do the mountains first and do the detail into them. So I would start on those parts and you push your rug needle in and underneath you just pull the, the little tail out because this is the back side of your piece. The front is what's going to look all shaggy and pretty and it's on the underside. You're working from the back. So you move your, you move your punch needle a couple of uh, strings ahead. I wouldn't do it every, every string but maybe move it a couple. Punch it in all the way down. Punch. Turn your needle to where the scoop is always facing where you're going punch and just continue on. Now if you keep punching and it doesn't, the, the thread keeps coming out, it's because something is stopping it. You need to make sure that your thread is very loose and all you do is you just pull it back in place, put your needle in, and continue on. When you get to the point you want to turn your needle, I turn it to the side and kind of move sideways and then go on and move forward again. 
I do this around the whole outline of the horse and then I start working inward. If you're unhappy with your stitches or you decide to change color, just pull your needle up and the stitches come right out. Get your yarn back to where it has a one inch tail. You can kind of scratch that and it'll heal up those holes. And then just start again. I will just continue and go all the way around the edge of the horse and then once that's done, I will start working on the inner edge and just start working inward. So I'm just going to go ahead and just show you how I would do that to fill in. And I get pretty close. You don't want to punch in the same hole as the previous uh, stitches were in, but I, I punch really close. I like it thick. I also like the way the design looks on the back, so you don't necessarily have to turn it over if you want uh, to use this side as your design. Just make sure that you don't have any what they call holidays, these little holes. You know, fill them in real closely if you missed a spot. But you just keep filling in until you eventually work inward and get all the black done. And then I would start on one of the other pieces that butts up to the black, like the mountains or the grass. Notice I'm turning my needle where the scoop is pointing in the direction that I am moving. When you finish and you want to get out, you will reach underneath and hold the thread and pull your needle up so that your thread doesn't come out. You don't want it to come out. And you'll snip off your thread and you'll pull the little tail through to the front. Now, this is the back side, and this is what the front side will look like. Don't worry that it looks real sparse here because it's only got one row, but as you know, you notice as you fill in the rows, it gets thicker, and you just clip the little tails off. This will be filled in. It just, until the other color is put in, it closes up on, the, on this side. I will show you that to you once you start punching with the next color. So we're going to change color and we're going to do the mountains next. And you thread your needle. Okay, so what you do is you start, I, I like to start in the, you know, the tiniest point. Pull your tail through on the other side so that your tail is sticking out the right side of the finished side. And then you just start working your way. You could just go all the way around it or you can go back and forth. I like to fill in as I go so I usually go back into it and get each little section finished before I move on. Always keep that scoop in the direction that you are punching, just so that you can see what it looks like on the other side. I'm gonna flip this over. And now you can see the detail of the mane that you couldn't see before the blue was put in there. Okay, so that should give you a good idea about how to go about it. There's a lot of information out there. This yarn that I'm using is just basic acrylic, basic weight yarn that you can get anywhere. You can also use a thicker yarn as well and it gives you a kind of a different look. This is this was done in the chunky rug yarn. This is actually rug yarn. This is just basic yarn. So it kind of depends on what effect you want you want to give. This is more of a chunky look whereas the other is more of a of a fuzzy look. Now if you do use the chunkier rug yarn it's it's not too hard to punch, but it is it, it goes in with a lot more effort than with the, the smaller weight yarn. So your hand does tend to get a little more tired, but it just kind of depends on what look you are going for. 
Okay, when you're finished with your design, you can clean it up. And by that I mean just take your punch needle and just move your uh, threads in place where they need to be. Sometimes they get a little wacky and you can just clean it up, get them where they should be and it just makes it look a lot cleaner and neater. You can also take your scissors if you have any pieces sticking up and just you can trim it and vacuum it afterwards because you'll have little little particles everywhere but this just gives it more of an even nicer finish. This particular design you can do it in a weekend. I mean, it does. It, it, it is time consuming, but if you're just sitting and watching TV, this is kind of mindless, but it's fun, and the time goes and you don't even realize it, but you can complete this project within a weekend. This pattern is perfect for a pillow. If you wanted to make a pillow, or it could just be a wall hanging tapestry. And there's a lot of videos it off. on YouTube about how to finish a piece where you turn it in and then you whip stitch it with the yarn to give it a finished look. This could be a rug. Uh, I would probably use wool yarn or wool strips and rug hook it if you were going to use it as a rug. But as a pillow or wall hanging, you can pretty much use anything you like. 